it's the Sega Mega Drive. Hello everybody, welcome back here to show and to the Retro Cave of Wonders on Retro TV. Lots of new goodies to be looking at in future programs that have only just come in. Like this weird 35mm camera sitting up here. <laughs> anyway, today is Sega Mega Drive. We're going to be taking a quick look at it and some of the games. Now this bad boy came out in the early 90s. For all you people who do remember this, this left a mark on the video game war industry in the time. It was the 16-bit walls with blast processing and all that crazy stuff going on. But still, between Sega and Nintendo, they wanted to make an impression. So, taking a look at this, they made a big, bad and mean and in your home. So you had the power of the Mega Drive. Now this year in 2017, Sega and Tectoy in Brazil uh, were able, well Sega gave Tectoy the license to remake brand new Mega Drives. Yes, you heard it, brand new Mega Drives. And I do believe this has already been released and reviewed on other programs. Uh, but it looks exactly the same. It has an SD card slot at the back to play emulating games. And it plays, apparently, your normal Mega Drive cartridges, but I'm not 100% sure on all the specs. I don't know too much about it. But yes, in today's world, you can buy a brand new Mega Drive. Only in Brazil. So you may have to order one from around the world if you really, really want one. But I reckon the best way to play any Sega game is on the real deal, as these things never die. Wow, these, these things will be going in 50 years time. Hey, and a good thing about the Mega Drive when it came out, it came out with backwards capacity. As you see, you can play all your Master System games by buying this nifty little converter here. You open that little flap and put your Master System cartridge in there like that. Plug it into the top. And away you go. So already out the door, you had a catalogue of hundreds of games ready to play on launch day. Quite ingenious, don't you think? Um, and they had other accessories, stuff like these arcade-style joy pads, which do work even very well today. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details on the Mega Drive, because you've probably seen it all on YouTube anyway, but in my opinion, it's one of my best and favourite uh, retro game machines, along with the Sega Master System. They come pretty close. Again, being uh, when I was a kid in Australia, I think Sega at the time were more bigger than Nintendo, and I don't even really, really recall too much going on with Nintendo, even though it was there. But uh, I think Sega was the best player. Now, at the end of the Sega Mega Drive's life, they tried many other consoles to try and cash in on what was left of this. You know, you had the Sega CD, Sega CD2, you had the 32X, which as you've probably seen on other clips and videos, how monstrous that can be. I don't have any of those I used to, but I have no need for them anymore. And then they came up with two other machines towards when the Sega Saturn was being released. One was the Multimega, which was a Mega Drive and Mega CD in one, in a very small little um, package, like this. And they also brought out a handheld, which was this one here, the Sega Nomad. Now this again was only brought out in America in the last efforts to sell the last bits of Mega Drive, I guess, to keep it alive as much as they can. Now, these are getting very hard to find nowadays and in very good condition. Uh, this one still works. Uh, when I picked it up, I uh, picked it up actually in a boot sale for like, hmm, 20 pounds. Uh, I don't even know if the guy knew what it was and actually um, I didn't actually see it in the box until I got it home. So 20 quid and it works, 
Can't go wrong with that. Now this one here you can play mostly all Mega Drive games on that without any hassle. And even though I still think the screen was slightly better than the Sega Game Gear, but even though they are still washing out screens, not like LCD screens, but I still love this little machine. It had a gigantic battery pack on the back. So you can sit on the bus like this. Yeah. Mm. Big bulky, I know, but it's a good little collector's piece today, and if you ever come across one, you should pick one up, because these may become very valuable in the future. Now let's move on to some of the games I've got here. I've got a, a small selection here. Now I used to have hundreds and hundreds and walls and walls of games, but as life takes over and new things come about, I sold a lot of it to go into other ventures and, uh, well, life itself, how can I explain? But we always do this, we get a collection, we sell it for something, then we get it back and then we sell it for something else, and that's what it is, it's an investment for the future. Now some games I've got over here are getting very, very rare to find, and judging online nowadays, a lot of games are going up in value. Not so much the sports games, but some in particular games, in, 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 like, like for instance here. Streets of Rage series, you've got number one, two and three. I've only got the one at the moment. Uh, again, I haven't got back into the collecting side of things, uh, but I'm quite happy with what I've got here. But Streets of Rage series, you know, along with the uh, Street Fighter series and like the Mortal Kombat's. I still think for a Sega own beat em up game, this was one of the best around at the time. It's very playable, uh, the sound is good, nice and beaty, graphics are excellent, and again, these are still floating around for a reasonable money. Maybe one day they might go up in more value, but I think Streets of Rage 3 is the most valuable one in this series. Next one we got here is Outrun. This one doesn't really often come up uh, on online auctions or anything like that, but it does come up from time to time. Um, good little conversion, this one again, like all the outruns, such a great game to play. Uh, and with the 16-bit power. Uh, I picked this one up for, uh, I think it was about £10. Um, I thought that was reasonable for the price. Not too sure what the value is of them today. Now another little rare one that's becoming more rarer in very good condition and hard to come by is the Ghostbusters on the Mega Drive. Now out of all the Ghostbusters that came out on the 8-bit cartridges and Nintendo and Sega, this is completely different from any of those altogether and it's probably considered as one of the better ones to get and play. Um, you play as individual characters, you have different strengths, you have different maps, you've got completely whole different thing and I tell you what, this works very well like a treat and I do love playing this one as uh, you can get into it, it's got a big story to it and hey, you know what, if you ever come across this one do pick it up because one day it may be worth something more than what it is. This one here is in very mint condition, it's not even, uh, there's no damage on the cartridge or on the book itself. So I think uh, I got this one from a collector, and it still has the hangy tabs. Good, uh, good little investment that one. Other ones we've got classics you see a common of, which is Quack Shot. We've got Quack Shot here in this uh, uh, plastic cartridge. This one is an Australian copy. A lot of them were known to come into these little plastic cartridges. I got Green Dog. Good old Arnold Palmer's Tournament Golf. Yes, I think everyone known to man had this when they bought the Mega Drive new because it came out when the Mega Drive first released. Other good classics like California games. Yes, millions of these copies still floating around and for rather cheap probably, uh, money. Probably money, money. And uh, again, very good graphics and great sound. Of course, they left out a couple of events on this one from the Master System conversion. Moving right along. Now I also collect uh, a lot of magazines, uh, advertising brochures from the era, and here's a couple here just to show you what I've got. First one here is the official Sega Mega Drive Power Tips book. Came out in 1991 I believe, and in England it sold for £9.99 through Virgin. Excellent. Now, this one's a little hard one to come by nowadays, and I've 
don't often see it up here. But this one is good for a lot of reasons for the early days of the Mega Drive. It has almost a lot of the most popular games it has in there. All your hints and tips. It even shows you cheat codes to get through the games. You've got Afterburner 2, Altered Beast, Battle Squadron, and so forth. And as you see, hundreds of games in here from Moonwalker all the way to Space Harrier 2. Good little one to come by as in original condition. Not too sure how much these sell for nowadays, but I've had this since new, so I bought this when it was released. Other stuff I've got here is the Fantasy Star 3 hint book. Still in its cellophane packaging. Look at that. How mint can you, well I wouldn't say it's mint, but how good a condition can you get with this? Now if you own the Fantasy Star 3 cartridge that came with it at the time, like Fantasy Star 2 hint book, it would be very hard to get through the game without this. As this one does go through many generations and it has multiple endings in it, you could probably try and work it out from the instruction manual. Mm, but I don't think uh, that would have been good. But back in the day before internet and social media, you had to rely on hint books. But anyway, if you ever see one of these, these are getting hard to come by as well. Pick it up and uh, maybe one day these two are coming back into fashion. Mm. There we go, let's just put them there, shall we? Okay, so let's move right along. Right, other games in my collection here is the famous Fantasy Star series, which started its life on the Master System and continued all the way through to the Dreamcast with Fantasy Star Online. But here we have the full collection here of the 8 and 16 bit versions, which is the original from the Master System here, original Fantasy Star. You have Fantasy Star 2 that came out, was the first one on the Mega Drive, which boasts, ooh, 6 mega power memory with a 110 page hint book. Now if you're ever collecting this, make sure you get the hint book with it, because playing this without it is impossible. Well then again, you've got the internet, so you got that too. Uh, but for collectability, if you get these two, because these were originally packaged together from new, and I believe it cost something like $80 at the time, it was very expensive. Um, it was a very good game, but I was a bit disappointed when it came to the battle scenes as all you had was grids and no colour, not even a colour palette. So besides that, it was a little dry, but the game was good. So we've got Fantasy Star 2 and Fantasy Star 3 and with the hint book as I showed before. Now a lot of people do disregard this game as a part of the Fantasy Star series because it, it, it took place in a completely different... Uh, uh, world, or well, many worlds inside a world bubble, and it had nothing to do with the Algo star system. I'm not too sure about the storyline, but anyway, the only thing I like this, like about this one more than the second one, was the graphics. They were more better, cleaner, and the battle scenes were far better than that. However, the gameplay in this one was far better than this one. So, mm. so after this one, I think they got it right. They moulded them all together and they came up with Fantasy Star 4, which plays just as perfectly as the second one with the graphics of the third and the story of the first. It's kind of like a mix of all three in this one very good one. This plays very, very well. The battle scenes are awesome. And what can I say? If you ever find these, grab them because they're becoming very, very, very rare indeed, especially the fourth one here. But if you come across the whole set, you will not be disappointed in a role-playing adventure. So moving on, let's see what else I have here in my collection. I'll just move these out of the way. There we go. Now other strange cartridges I have here is like my Japanese version of Ghouls and Ghosts. And this one looks like it's never even been played. It's still like brand new in there. Uh, this works very well on my PAL version. Uh, with the cartridges in there and the cartridge slot has different artwork on the back. Uh, these can be found occasionally uh, coming up a lot of Japanese games. Another strange one I have here is from Australia which was from the Platinum Edition. Now back in Oz they had, when they wanted to re-release video games they came up with Platinums and Golds and 
And who knows what bag tan, but this is the platinum one of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker in the silver case. On the back, actually info on there as well. Um, again, I pick up a lot of games in there, and the way you can tell they're Australian is they have the different uh, ratings in the corner there, uh, as well as other different slightly variations, especially when you've got the big stuck sticker on the side. If you wanted to uh, get through the game, you used to ring that phone number, and they'd give you hints to get through the game. Another little rare one, but I pick a lot of weird ones up when I go back to Australia. Other ones I got, simple ones like the Flintstones, we got Busby, Claws Encounter of the Third Coin, one and two. Busby, that was supposed to be the new mascot before Sonic came along. Good games, work well. Uh, Centurion, not too sure about this, it came with a big pile of games, I've never played this one. Theme Park, yes, yeah, one of the first games to come out on any console that you could build your own theme park in, and it did actually work well, had a lot of bugs in it, but you could still play it, and the idea was to build your theme park without going broke. Of course, spawning from that came games like uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon series, and that uh, went very well, but this is still a um, hard one to come by. Yes. Sony Golf, another hard one to come by. Came out originally when the Mega Drive was launched. Uh, it's a golf game, a crazy golf game with many, many, many different. Uh, I think there's only about six courses on here. Um, the graphics are a bit, can be a bit fuzzy in times, and it does play okay, but it's just like a little rarity, whether good or bad. F22, another one that came out when Sega's Mega Drive launch. Uh, an aircraft, the fighter battle game that was made up of polygons. Uh, for the graphics, that type of style, kind of like a VR racing game. Graphics average, it worked. After a while, it got a little bit, bit boring. Uh, it was all same, most same, the music didn't change and all that type of stuff, but it's still fun to play. Another great one, Aladdin. Now, this is pretty close to the movie with the graphics, sound, and gameplay. Very great game to play, this one, kind of like The Lion King. Good one to get. Batman Returns. Eh, well, average side scroll the game. Not as good as the original first Batman that came out, uh, but still okay. I have Shadow of the Beast. This is a very weird game indeed, but it played very well, and with the weird style monsters, you can't complain. Spot goes to Hollywood. Not much more to say about that one. Over here, what do we got? What do we got over here? Right, left we got stuff like California games, Quack Shot, Castle of Illusion, plenty of those around. Sonic 3, I'm sure you can still pick these up around on eBay and stuff like that. I don't think they're too hard to find. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your Sonic and Knuckles in the cardboard box, the add on, you plug your extra cartridge in. Uh, good, I can say, when you've got all these and you can uh, multiplayer and everything. Excellent. Sports games. Yeah, not much to say about them, but they never really worked well, did they? And I have a little good game uh, I come across, which I, I find it hard to find this now, is The Haunting. Very strange one, this one. Um, you go around the house and you haunt them. you got to get the people out of the house, and that's the name of the game. You jump into a washing machine, a car, your lounge, and then you try and scare people. It works very well. And being a poltergeist, what more fun can you have? Hmm. I've got another weird variant of Ghostbusters, I'm kind of unsure where this came from, it came in the job lot again when I was in Australia, um, don't know much about it, so it was funky enough, I thought I'd just pick it up, it may, somebody may know something about this. Hmm. Now I've got some other little ones here as well, some loose cartridges here, I've got plenty of those lying around, got the Immortal, okay for the time. Uh, next I've got the Turtles, a Return of the Shredder. Uh, getting hard to find this, even with a box and all that. So, uh, but this one has a different, couple of different titles around the world. But uh, this is the Japanese version. Plays it right. Uh, we have a Fantasy Star 4 Demo Plus cartridge. I think it was just uh, a demo to show people what the, the game could do. Again, it was in a big job lot of cartridges. Don't know too much about it. And um, some, some soccer game, yeah. Anyway, 
That is my uh, short collection here of uh, Sega Mega Drive and the games. I have hundreds more lying around on shelves as you can see. But this is just some of what I got today. And just to show you a little bit about uh, why I like the Sega Mega Drive. It's good, it's robust, it'll be around for at least another 50 years or so and people will still be playing this stuff in many years to come. When PlayStation have long, long gone. So if you like your retro games, go and pick yourself some up today. And again, these games are, some of these games are getting harder to get now. So, you know, they're going up in value. Uh, so they're a good investment as well as good gameplay. Anyway, for now, hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.